Hi everyone, welcome back. So, the video on Bat Miracles that I put out last week was really well, well received, and uh, and just as a quick aside, that feels pretty good as a content creator. You know, my main goal is to make stuff that you all enjoy, and so to see that good, you know, warm reception feels really nice. This week we are playing kind of not quite a pet deck of mine. It's not the exact word I'm looking for, but kind of an archetype that I really enjoy, even though I don't think it's like a, a tier one deck or anything of that sort, which is Aluren. I think that Aluren decks just tend to lead to some really fun gameplay and like play patterns and, you know, you tutor for exactly what you want. You get to play a lot of these fair sort of mirror matches. And so it's always a deck that holds a special place in my heart. And over the past, uh, you know, few sets, it's gotten a few cards that could potentially, you know, upgrade it and help it out. So I wanted to take it for a spin again. We're going to go through some of the new cards real quick. The first one and most pivotal one being Asterak the Arclage. Now, it has some paragraph down here about attacking. We don't care about that. The one we care about is that when it enters the battlefield, if you haven't completed Tomb of Annihilation, return it to your hand and venture. Gonna be honest, I don't even know what Tomb of Annihilation does. The only thing I know is that if you venture into this dungeon in particular, when you complete it, you can start at the beginning again. And so what happens is with a learn and play, you can just play Astrak a bunch of times, venture into this dungeon a bunch of times, and each time you go through it, you uh, drain your opponent for one, and you draw a card. So with a learn in play, you can just you know replay this over and over again and drain your opponent out. In the past, a learn has played creatures with similar effects, you know, where you know when the creature enters the battlefield, your opponent loses some amount of life and you gain that amount of life. This is a little bit better than all the previous ones because it doesn't require you to have a different way to return it to your hand. So in the past, what you would do is you'd use Cavern Harpy as the way to return the card that drains to your hand and then replay that card and then bounce Harpy. Do that over and over again. Now you don't need Harpy. So you know if your only two cards in hand are Lauren and Ark, uh, you're an Asterak, you can win the game. And that is a small upgrade, but certainly like a definitive upgrade to learn. That being said, I think this card is incredibly weak by itself, you know? Paying three mana to scry one or make a 1-1 one -one goblin token, really bad. So I don't think it's a card that you want a ton of. I think it's just the slightly improved win con for the deck. That unfortunately you can't tutor with Recruiter, but you can still play the game where Alarm plus Recruiter gets you infinite life by um, grabbing Niambi and Cavern Harpy, and these two can just keep bouncing each other to your hand so you gain infinite life. At that point, you can Recruiter for an Ice Fang Coatl and start drawing your deck with Coatl and Cavern Harpy. And then eventually you will find the Asterak and uh, drain them out and win the game. Now, <laughs> it sounds convoluted, and it is. Obviously, in paper, it's pretty straightforward, because if you just know what you want, you just start doing it. The one thing I am worried about is that on Magic Online, this is a ton of clicking and a ton of time off your clock that you use. And so... That is something that you that I want to kind of look into and see if that comes up today where, you know, venturing into the dungeon five times or six times or whatever to drain your opponent for one life is a lot slower clockwise than the previous cards that we've used in the slot have been. And so it might push it over the edge where it's just not a feasible, like goal on Magic Online to loop this a bunch of times to gain life, loop this a bunch of times to draw cards, and then loop this a bunch of times to win the game. You know, that might be too much.
So it's something that I want to look into. Let's jump into the leagues. All right, we are here for round one uh, of the ever-present Dryad Arbor in our opening hand. That being said, I think does a keep. Green Suns can maybe find us a veteran explorer. Help us get going. Brainstorm can shuffle away things back. I'm going to keep. This might be a little loose. All my keeps are loose. Uh, so, looks like we're likely playing against some sort of combo deck. Underground Sea Preordain frequently uh, signifies Doomsday. I'm gonna leave up this in case they play Wasteland. I don't think it's likely, but who knows. Okay. Okay. Ah, so maybe this is Storm instead of a uh, instead of Doomsday. Well, I'm going to hope to find Force of Will plus a blue card. Drat did not. All right. Well, no fear from the opponent. Unfortunately, didn't have it. Uh, like I mentioned in the deck tech, this deck has a good deal less interaction than your standard deck. Oh man, imagine if I found Endurance here. I think this was a pretty poor line from the opponent. I think if the Infernal Tutor is resolving, then like you you just can get another Infernal Tutor and tendrils me. Um, this lost to more things than they needed to. I'm going to concede anyway because it doesn't matter here. Um, but yeah, I think I suppose if I'm playing Underground Sea, it's not pretty clear what I'm on, so it's like Endurance probably isn't on the brain there, but that feels like a needlessly foolish play. Um, but anyway, let's see what we want. I'm going to leave the Hydro Blast on the board for now. I honestly don't think our matchup is terrible. It's just a little... Like, I'm looking at like what I would want to cut, and there's not too much here that is terrible. Uh, I think Gris is obviously kind of bad. Veteran's probably a little bit slow. And this is the issue, this is the thing I always wonder is like how much of the combo am I supposed to keep versus a faster combo deck? Growth definitely don't need. Um, probably want this. What does this even get? Not much. Yeah, I think I just keep it like this. Um, I guess Green Suns can find the Dryad Arbor. Help me ramp a little. Ramping certainly not bad. Just what am I cutting? Maybe this is a little bit. Maybe it's better than Teferi because it's a flash threat. Pressure's life total. I'm going to try this. Um, this hand seems reasonable. I'm going to lead on the Underground Sea again because that's what I showed in the last game. They're stopped in my upkeep. I oh I okay. Um we have green suns. Could be our pitch card for endurance. I'm gonna brainstorm here. Cause if I don't find another green card, I think I wanna save this. The ramp isn't worth it. Like what is this hand even ramping into? I did find another endurance though, so How crazy is it to just put these two back, green suns for Dryad Arbor, and then just start going beat down? I don't hate that, actually. So that's what we're going to do.
just one thing I could have thought of is that if I'd saved the green suns, I could have green suns for black roof. That's certainly something to think about. In fact, that may might have been better, honestly. Um, I can get Savannah, which is nice. Get me all my colors. And lets me attack with the Arbor. I definitely don't mind it. And at this point, I'll just have, like, cast Endurance. I'm up for most of the game. I don't mind not finding other. They do not shuffle off the pond. So see, I have extra force of will. And then I'm going to start beating down. I think the brainstorm interesting. I suppose that kind of makes sense. Maybe. Uh, just because if they have like a Veil of Summer, uh, then like even if I draw one blue card, it kind of doesn't matter. If I draw no blue cards, it's the same. I could have cast the Ponder, but I don't know what I'd be looking for, really. And I wanted to attack for one and have the Endurance still. Every point matters against them just because, you know, they're an ad nauseum deck, and so the difference between 15 and 16 might not be relevant, but over two turns, you know, the two points could matter. They haven't been shuffling, though. This one's close. I think I just want to pressure them. You know, um, put them on a clock. It's not quite a two turn clock, but you know, if they're at one, it means they can't fetch. Uh, is relevant. Interesting. All right, well, a lot of lions and diamonds. Well, I'm going to start by trying to force this. Because if this gets Veil of Summer, then they draw a card and the Infernal Tutor doesn't work. They can also, I suppose, just tutor for whatever they need. So it kind of ends up being the same in the end. I'm going to see what they get, obviously. It's probably just Pass and Flames here, would be my guess. Oh, that's awkward. Um, well, <laughs> we're looking pretty dead. <laughs> oh my, I forgot that this was a thing now. Um, but it makes sense. It's like a nice addition. All right, well, suppose I can cycle this Veil of Summer. Uh, and these don't target me. Yeah, okay. Um, well, 
If I draw a Recruiter or an Aluren, I do have the Switchclaw Talisman to find the other ones. Dang it. <laughs> All right, well, so maybe this needs to find Brainstorm now at this point. Um, this is nothing in here, obviously, that would. I'm done. So yeah, it needs to be Brainstorm in two. Uh, LRM plus Recruiter. Ah, uh, only one of the two. Unfortunate. Um, yeah, and then I'm, I would be one mana short even if this found the LRM. But I'm going to ponder anyway just to see what I would have hit. Uh, I think that looking back on that game, I probably should have saved the Green Sun Zenith for the Ufe. Um, and that's, it's not just because they <laughs> drew all four LEDs. Just because in general, like, Ufe is, like, a pretty strong card of the matchup. And so... Uh, so yeah, I think that one was on me. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna go to the next game or next match rather. Um, but yeah, oh one to storm. Like I said, I, I think that is one of the rough parts of this deck is that you know there's other combo decks that go underneath you, and you don't have as much interaction as a, a you know just general fair mid range deck. But anyway, we'll be back for round two. All right. Here for round two, we are on the play. Just got raffle stomped by Storm, but you know, that happens sometimes. This hand seems fairly reasonable. We have good mana. Um, and then we have some interaction in the form of Cabal Therapy. And only with abundant growth. I've never been one of those therapy in the blind type people. I'm not even very good at casting therapies, but I know what deck my opponent is playing, so. I uh, certainly wouldn't want to do it in the dark. Uh, get up basic, draw a card. Coatl is a very nice pair with therapy for obvious reasons. Hmm, Mother of Runes. So, I could use the therapy now, name something like Thalia. Uh, or, you know, I could kind of wait a bit and see if my opponent plays Stoneforge Mystic, so I just, like, will know a card in their hand. Um, I kind of like that. This can get a basic forest and play the Kowadal out, so I'm protected from Wasteland. Next turn, I can recruit her for Plague Engineer, so I'm not really worried about Thalia. Um, there is the Stoneforge Mystic. This card's so much better when you know a card in their hand. I wonder if this card that you can play alongside this that uh, show you your opponent's hand for no mana while uh, while drawing a card. I think that'd be a good combo if such a card existed. Not quite Astrolabe. Uh, Koala doesn't even have that touch yet. Very sad. Um, okay, so I think I'm going to lead on therapy. It's just a matter of what land I'm doing. I think I'll just use the Omni land and play out. Or maybe it's just better to play out this one than I have. I think it's just a little bit better to do this one because I, I want to play this land anyway. And then I can decide if the Ice Fang is better in play or... as a card out of their hand. Uh, or... three cards out of their hand. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, well... Uh, you know what? I, I think it's better to, you know, this this is a really, really, really close play, but I think it's better to take triple swords than it is uh, to have a 1-1 one, one in play without Death Touch. They have Mother Runes, one unknown. Um, I 
I guess the question is, do I want to brainstorm? Because then I can recruit her and like shuffle away a bad card. But the cards in my hand are all pretty good. So I think I can just wait for a little bit later. Obviously, I can't brainstorm this turn because of uh, the Thali attack. Let's get that Plague Engineer. And uh, show our opponent their impending doom. Uh, I will still take the three. Even force is a pretty good pickup too, because if they have an answer to uh, the engineer, I can just force it. Could clip him from my opponent. Uh, protect the stone forge for a turn on the way out. I'd like sorcery speed removal. I couldn't use it here. The only card in play or in hand is Mother. I think at this point I will brainstorm. Uh. Okay, so I have the win here, which means I'm just going to put back these two, um, and I'll let this resolve. So next turn I will play out the Rector. And then the turn after that, I will therapy and flashback. I can just force anything they play. I suppose if they draw... No, even Sword of Fire and Ice doesn't work because then I just... Um, it would kill this and then this will get the... Okay. Ooh, that is really annoying. That was the only draw. <laughs> I was mistaken. Uh, I'm just going to play this. Bounce my recruiter. So I need to basically what I need to do now is find black mana, obviously. Um, and Niambi lets me like discard Uro to draw two cards in upkeep if uh, they port me again. Right. Wait. If I don't find a land, I'm going to go up to eight cards, I can just discard that therapy. So, uh, all right, looks like that's what we're I'm going to put uh, 
I guess I'm just supposed to do this and get the learn. It's funny that it can find abundant growth. It's actually not something I thought about until just now. I have a force. So, you know, they can't they can't do anything. This is going to happen. Okay, I really appreciate that. Um uh, my opponent obviously they could waste like seven minutes off my clock uh, or something to that effect, getting me to loop through the combo. So in this matchup, I think what I want is pretty straightforward. I don't know if I want all the swords just because I'm not sure how all in on removal I am. What I don't want is a little less. I think all, I don't think I need all my Force of Wills. And I actually think that this is a matchup where I don't need this card. Um, just because gaining infinite life and putting a bunch of Plague Engineers into play, generally enough to win the game against Death in Texas. I think I want the green suns. Dried Arbor is obviously not particularly strong as like a mana dark, especially in this matchup with you know Wasteland plus Swords to Plowshares, but I think it's still worth keeping, and especially because you can find the Ufe um, as well as like Grist or something of that nature. So what do I cut? I think I just want all the recruiters because it's kind of like the extra copies of Plague in there. Maybe this card is like not. It's fine. Maybe this fairy is like a little meh. This right. fairy is nice because like you can stop my opponent from like doing things with a learn out like flicker wisp or skyclave. But I think on the whole, it kind of just will bounce a card and then die frequently. <laughs> so we have a learn. And the Cavern Harpy. Obviously we're missing some colors of mana. Uh, I'm going to let this go, just because you know, ultimately my goal is going to get to be to put a learn in play, so it's like, what does it matter? I'm going to leave this one dangling, just because um, I have two sources of black and one source of white. Also, because this is a combo piece, so it's like, you really don't want to force it. That is another issue that the deck does run into sometimes is uh okay, sure. is that you have combo pieces <laughs> that are blue and so they they like are part of your force count but like not really um so do I expose myself to wasteland I think the answer is no I think I'm just going to do this and you know I will definitely never be able to cast Quaddle next turn but um it makes me more likely to be able to cast Plague Engine. So that's what we're going with. Aha! And they did have Wasteland, so I feel better about my decision. Um, that feels really good, too. Uh, I'm just going to run out the Engineer. I'll name Spirit. They didn't have a two drop to put in, so no Stoneford, no Thalia. But they didn't tick up. That's interesting. Oh, they must have like another Spirit of the Labyrinth, would be my guess. Uh... Did 
Did I sign out of Coca Cola? I did not. I think I want to force this. It just feels that they're likely to have another spirit, and I want to. I think I want to use the green suns to get. Get an ice and quaddle. We get the Ufe too. But I'm playing to play a learn, so like shutting off the vial doesn't really uh well. I will put that into play. I don't think I attack with the Plague of Mirror, because if they... That's fine. Um, if I did have the Thalia, then this would just die. Can I get Basic Forest because... As I can. And so now, even if they have like a removal spell for the Ice Fang Coatl, what we have is. I'm actually just going to do. First. I don't think it hurts anything. Float a blue. This gets me one card deeper. Even if it's not relevant. I'm going to hold on the Cavern Harpy. Just because if they have like Skyclave Apparition, I want to do things in response. Because I can respond to them trying to kill Lauren by drawing a bunch of cards of this nature. Okay, so now this in response. Okay. Yeah, so Asterac not needed. Just getting to basically just have a, you know, your opponent's creatures all get minus one, minus one, just because you can reset it with what you want ends up being enough in this matchup most of the time. And this would have found my ambi to gain infinite. All right, cool. So one and one, we'll be back for round three. Here for round three, won the die roll. Just won our second round against Death and Taxes, kind of highlighting one of the strengths of the Aluren deck, which is that in matchups where Plague Engineer is good, you effectively have access to a lot of them because you play Recruiter. Uh, we see a Urion being revealed, which means 
you know, it's likely some kind of value pile. Uh, those games go long. Your opening hand isn't particularly relevant. This hand's good enough. I'm going to keep. I'm going to lead on basic planes, too, because I think it can make me seem like death and taxes, which would, you know, incentivize my opponent to be looking for removal spells, you know, and I think that in general the, the Lauren deck is good against things like Sword Supply Shares because almost all of your creatures get value when they enter play. Interesting. Here, Dean. No, your Iron deck. This is not something that you see every day, although I suppose your Iron is also not something you see every day, so who knows? Who knows what they have? Uh, right, I'm going to do this. Keep selling the illusion of Green White Maverick. It's possible my opponent's a combo deck, too, you know, like. I don't know. <laughs> I get some ramp on. There's blue, sure. Makes sense. Okay. Well, so what does that mean? So I could recruiter for recruiter, or I could recruiter for Ice Fang so that I have something to pitch to this force. So, well, I kind of like that. And then I also can. Um, do like Ice Fang Niambi bounce Ice Fang or Ice Fang Niambi bounce recruiter to my opponent's end step if that comes up. Okay, so this is where the game gets tricky because am I playing around removal? Am I playing around counter magic? Uh, you know, what's the deal? I think what I'm likely to do is I think just jam the Alluren and then. Because see, now they could be holding up sorts of power shares as well. If they choose to. They might just ponder. So yeah, I think I'm going to jam Lauren and protect it with the force. Make them have you know two pieces of interaction, and if they don't, then I get to Niambi bounce my recruiter. Recruiter finds Cavern RP and then win the game. Chose to not shuffle off the Fine. Uro is also a nice pickup. Although I suppose not right now because uh can't draw cards. I suppose I could learn or I could cast it on my opponent's turn. I think I want to. Uh they F6. They <laughs> might not. So now I will get the well, you know what? I'll get one more recruiter first. Um, just so I have more pressure on. Okay. Just so I have more pressure on the Narset. Cool. <laughs> well, that was good. <laughs> I guess they just cast a bunch of cantrips and didn't find interaction, which I suppose sometimes happens in your. 80 card deck, you know, you're just going to see your force of wills less often. Okay, so for sideboarding. Definitely want this, definitely want this. Definitely want the carpets and the veil. They likely play Uro, so endurance is not bad, just it's like a value creature. Uh, and then I usually trim on force of wills. I usually keep all my alerts. Uh, I think I'm going to trim one veteran, 
trim one growth because they aren't attacking my mana. Trim the Plague Engineer. I think gaining infinite life and drawing my deck and getting a board presence will be enough to win. So I think I'm going to leave it like this. And I just go from here. This seems reasonable. All right, yep, we'll run it. Eh. Hand seems about as good as any hand that uh, this deck can open. I'm gonna lead on the Tundra to ponder because deck plays a lot of like green spells uh, where it's like I might want to brainstorm off the Thunder next turn and then play a green spell. Might also just uh, hold up the Ice Fang. Mm. This all seems reasonable. Okay. Color is blue. They haven't chosen a third color, and they haven't shown me one either. So I'm curious as to what they will be. They're playing, you know. I'm just going to do this now. Uh, maybe if they like are playing white for Swords of Plashes, this is bad. Because then they know about it and can be searching for swords. Certainly possible. But it's better against Red Elemental Blast because it's already in play. So, uh, that's nice. <laughs> can also potentially save it with Niambi. I'm gonna play out this. Interesting that they let it go. I'm just gonna run out the recruiter. I think I'm actually going to get a uh, director. Just because if I ever find a Cobalt Therapy, it's a really str uh, strong combo. The other option would be to get like another Recruiter and just kind of sit on it, or another Ice Fang Quaddle to hold up in the end step. I kind of like the idea of this. Or so well. Nice. Okay. This is fine. Obviously, kind of annoying that my cantrips are shut off right now, but you know, what can you do? Like a really good hit. But I actually think it's better to
attack Narset with these two. And then... I will play out the carpet. It only makes one mana, but... I kind of wanted to hold up Niambi in combat. And then, like, Kawada doesn't do anything in, if, unless you play it in the end step. So, like, if they went to power or, you know, rev the Kawada in combat, uh, I would want to use the Niambi. Um, yeah, that's fine. Obviously, no use fighting a counter war we, that we know we would lose. Oh, they put your iron in here. Okay. That one makes more sense. So this is going to attack Narset. Going to attack them. I'm going to lead on the Ponder. If they want to reb this, then I get to Brainstorm. Uh, actually, a solid pickup. Oh, awkward. Yeah, sure. I don't think it's that bad. I what? It, interestingly, I could have tried to save it with the. Uh, Could have tried to save like one of the cards with the Niambi. Very possible. Um, so just put back one of the lands. Let this resolve. Recruiter could find Grist, which is a way to sacrifice Academy Rector. But it's awkward with uh with the Orion on the battlefield. I could also just like look to play and escape Uro, huh? That might be better. Take like a better use of my mana. Okay. 
Um, I actually think it's not a better use of my mana. Just because I know about the Red Blast, and I don't have enough to escape it twice. Oops. So what I'm going to do is... Just fetch in response to... The draw trigger, just so I don't draw the one. Uh, well, that might make things... Oh, awkward. <laughs> I, think, I think I must have either tapped wrong or fetched wrong. Yeah, this sort of fetch an island because now I can't play and escape the arrow. Well, I guess I didn't know I was going to draw a carpet. So. Um. What did they pitch? They pitched the ponder that I think we knew about. Yeah, we did. So they have Reb, two unknowns. Obviously, I'm in a bail. Let's get the three for one. Uh, yeah, I'll pick up Grist. Grist is nice because it fills the graveyard quickly for Uro 2 with the plus, although I might have to minus right away to uh, kill the Orion. I'm going to make green to start. It's possible I'm just supposed to fight over the rep with a hardcast force of will for the turn. It is a good use of my mana. I have one, two, three, four, five, six mana otherwise. So I guess the other line, if I don't do that, is to play Grist minus play the recruiter for the Orion. I think it's better to just Oh wait, no I <laughs> Oh my god, the mana in this deck is atrocious! Um, so yeah, I will just say okay to that. Suppose I missed a point of damage. If they go to kill the recruiter, I can Iambi in response. I could also fetch Dryad Arbor. Haha! <laughs> All right, that's actually kind of a speed. I think that's actually a little better than leaving this out and killing it because I want it in my hand for the combo. This one. The three, four. Uh -huh. So with the fetch line next turn, I can even just escape her again next turn, which is really cool.
Hmm. Pretty damn sure. I really like Gris. This card's like pretty good. <laughs> Just like in any sort of fair matchup. You know, it's just a versatile removal spell. Um, you know, just get some value, fills up your graveyard, does all these things, helps with your self-sacrifice synergies with, like, Veteran Explorer and things of this nature. What did I do? Two cards on top. Assume the Brainstorm was one of the cards. I think uh, I think I'm gonna force that. It's just too many cards and the last card's red blast, that's rough. Or power blast. It's I think it's just too many cards. It sucks that I have to pitch the Miami, but um even if it doesn't work, Grist can pressure them, I'm gonna escape Uro, so it's not awful. Uro could potentially even kill it next turn. In upkeep, I will. Fetch for a... So I'm going to brainstorm first. Uh, put a... Uh, Put a forest into the graveyard. I don't want to draw the arbor, so I'm going to fetch it away. Escape Uro. If the last card is swords, like it's like awkward. Like I could have played it to fairy first. I thought it was slightly better to figure out like what I was doing with my turn. And it's a little bit weird of them to keep the swords anyway. Uh, I'm gonna bounce the carpet. Could potentially use it as like a ritual. Um or just Next turn. Well, so I can pretty easily get Alurian into play. That's for sure. I suppose even playing the Teferi, like if they have the swords, they just tap and swords the arrow. Like it's not really. I didn't actually lose value, so I definitely like my play of waiting and seeing if it's the best use of my turn. Um, okay.
obviously plus this. And this is so annoying. It's like they have two things that I want to kill. Can't really kill the arrow. What if I just Yeah, I think I just need to like I don't want to lose the grist. I think I'm behind enough where I just want to uh, decay this, try to pressure Jace to, through attacking it. And then if they do go to like Swords the Rector, I can therapy plus flash it back. Is it the Fairy Plus? But I think I just want it on the board. It's just like extra damage to attack Jace with. Because like the thought is, okay, they escape the arrow, and then on my turn, I minus Grist to kill it. What am I even supposed to name here? Um, one ponder's gone. I'll name ponder. All right, arrow, utopia, sprawl. I'm gonna. I could just get the growth. Like, the learn just isn't doing anything for me right now. If I draw any creature here, uh, I can use it to kill the arrow and have the um, wrist kill, or like the insects kill the Jace. What else did I see in their hand? Like, did I know about the drop? I did. If you still be a sprawl. Um. So, okay, so obviously plus like this. <sighs> okay, so I think the best answer is to just cast this. Shuffle their graveyard back in, then trade it with the arrow, have the insects kill the Jace. Because if the graveyard's empty, the arrow, like, I, I, there was no way for me to get it so that I could, um, 
like use the endurance with the arrow already in the graveyard and kill the Jace. I would have to sack an insect. So I think this is fine. It means I don't deal with the arrow permanently, obviously, but you know they only have one card in the graveyard. This Grist has been absolutely uh, essential this game. For sure. Uh, that one's good. Uh, losing the Arbor, kind of annoying. That's okay. I don't even think I have a fetchable with the Vista. Let me get rid of it. I'm actually just going to hold this um, because, you know, if you remember in sideboarding, we, we took out the Astrax. We don't actually have the infinite combo. Um, and I don't want to get this off the table. Silly point. You don't even need that. Like, it's just better in play than gaining a bunch of life and drawing a bunch of cards. When I have the... Oh, I should have... I could have drawn into Leovold, I suppose, like just draw my deck and found Leovold. I'm going to start going now, I suppose. Just find Leovold. Okay. Opponent's use the writing on the wall. But yeah, so what I would do is I would draw my library, uh, eventually find a Leobold. Um, in theory. I can't deck because there's one more endurance in here. Um, so I eventually find a Leobold, you know, put it into play. Uh, I suppose I could also not deck because I have Um, Have a big board state. They'd have no cards in hand. Start attacking them when they cool. So that was a really sweet back and forth. Uh, Grist was an absolute powerhouse there, just like putting out board presence, filling the gateway for Uro, and killing their big creatures and big planeswalkers. Um, so yeah, I'll come back for the end of round review. All right, so welcome to the end of set review. We went two and one, we lost to Storm, which I think. Displayed some of the weakness of the deck potentially, where you just have less, you know, uh, interaction. And uh, we beat Death and Taxes and Bant Orion, or I guess Four Color Orion, they had Redful Power Black. And I think that highlighted some of the strengths of the deck, which is, you know, if you're playing against future based decks, you have a lot of access to Plague Engineer, which is a very solid card against them. And then against the their decks, you know, you have a lot of grinding power. A lot of your cards place themselves or get some value. Uh, Grist in particular was incredibly uh, powerful against the Orion deck, just getting a lot of value and killing big things. Uh, and again, you have a lot of access to that to recruiter the guard. I liked a lot of what this list was doing. We didn't run into Delver, unfortunately, during our set, and I do think that might be tough just given the nature of our mana base and uh, 
you know, we're just playing three mana one ones that don't really do much um, as far as affecting the board is concerned. So that is definitely a matchup that I would love to test a little more with some of the new additions that this deck has got. When I was playing this a lot last year, you know, Delver felt close as it always does against the blue soup decks. Uh, and just having the extra removal spells on the sideboard helped a lot. Back then I wasn't running Carpet of Flowers, and I think that that was probably a mistake. That was probably me being stubborn. It's just kind of like the best thing that you can be doing against blue decks, especially in a deck like this where, you know, again, <laughs> three mana, one, one that draws a card. You need to be using a lot of mana. <laughs> or you're using a lot of mana in this deck, you know, to get the most out of just the, the fair plan with Recruiter. Uh, deck was really fun. Like I mentioned in the intro, I love the style of deck. You know, it gives you a lot of control over how you want the flow of the game to you know, play out, just with Recruiter being you know, a way to get your silver bullets or advance your game plan. It's just a matter of you know, making sure your interaction lines up correct and you can either rebuff the aggressive decks or find what you need for the combo decks. In a match against Storm, I do think I made a small misplay where I had the option to green suns for Ufe, uh, and I chose not to do that. And looking back, I think that that might have given us a shot there. So I think a lot of building learn is just about putting the interaction that you need uh, into the list, and then you know hoping to to draw into that when it's relevant. One thing that we didn't get to do because our opponents were very nice and uh, conceded, was that we never actually had to run through the Aserac loop uh, on Moto, which I just, quite frankly, am a little skeptical about how feasible this is within like the time constraints of doing it all. But I would definitely need some more first-hand experience to you know, make that distinction. It might just be that it kind of sucks because it's like you could run Yukima or any of the drain creatures and it's a faster win uh, like with the alert in play but this is the only card in the game that can win like by itself with alert it doesn't require cavern harpy so I think that just it is just optimal from a theoretical point of view, to play this, because it's like if you ever have whatever's in this slot plus learn, and that's your only two cards, this one can win, but the other ones won't. And so that will definitely, you know, be the difference in some games, whereas the extra time will also be the difference in other games, but just like from a strategic point of view, like this is literally the best card to be playing in this slot, so it's probably what you want to be doing. Uh... That being said, you could also potentially just like not play this uh, like slot at all and kind of do what we did in our round three against Bant or the Miracles deck with, you know, just gaining a bunch of life, creating a board state, you know, putting Leobold into play, putting Endurances into play, putting Grist into play so that, you know, you're not actually winning the game at instant speed, but you're creating kind of like an unbeatable board state and drawing a bunch of cards, and having a bunch of life. And so usually that's good enough. And that might just end up being better both from a strategic point of view and from a time point of view, where from a strategic point of view, you don't have to play this really atrociously bad card um, in every instance that Aloran isn't in play. And then from a strategic point of view, it might just be sufficient to you know, create a board um, and you know, not have to worry about going through this combo. So anyway, hope you all enjoyed and I will see you again soon. Bye guys.